In this video I'm going to look at benzene and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the development of the structure of benzene and we're also going to look at the bonding in the benzene molecule. It's worth saying at this point that compounds containing a benzene ring are referred to as aromatic compounds. They're also referred to as arenes. So if you see these words, you're dealing with a compound that contains at least one benzene ring. So benzene was kind of discovered a little bit by accident. It was isolated um, from the distillation of whale oil and they weren't sure what this substance was but at the time in 1825 they were able to establish its empirical formula which came out at CH so they knew that for every carbon in the molecule there was the same number of hydrogens then in 1834 I suppose as um, technology advanced they were able to determine the relative formula mass, the MR, of benzene, or of this molecule, and it came out at 78 grams per mole. So at this point, they were able to link these two pieces of information together, and the, the mass of the carbon and the hydrogen in the empirical formula is 13, and so you can see that this 13 will go into 78 six times. So that enabled them to say that the molecular formula must be C6H6. It then took another 30 years for a structure to be proposed and it was a brilliant scientist called Kekulé and he proposed the structure of this six-membered ring with the alternating double and single bonds. And the story goes that he came up with the idea when he had a dream about a snake biting its own tail. So what would we expect from Kekulé's structure? So we're going to look at three um, factors that we would expect from Kekulé's structure. And the first one is the type of reaction. So we know that carbon-carbon double bonds open up when they react and we get addition reactions occurring. So we would expect from Kekulé's structure addition reactions. The next thing we would expect is to do with the bond lengths. So carbon-carbon double bonds are slightly shorter than carbon-carbon single bonds. So we would expect alternating bond lengths. Now what that will do to the, the ring, it will make the hexagon irregular. And that would make it um, puckered, which basically just means distorted or deformed. And the final thing we would expect is to do with the enthalpy change of hydrogenation. So we've got this reaction at the bottom here. This is cyclohexene, which has, it's a six-membered ring with one double bond. If you react that with one mole of hydrogen and break that double bond, add the hydrogen to the cyclohexene and make cyclohexane, the enthalpy change for that reaction is minus, so it's exothermic, 120 kilojoules per mole. So Kekulé's structure has these three carbon-carbon double bonds, so that will react with three moles of hydrogen. It will still produce cyclohexane, so you would expect minus 360, in other words, three times that for cyclohexane. Obviously the way science works is scientists need to provide evidence to back up what they are proposing and so scientists have set to work to look at Kekulé's structure and the first thing that they found was that it actually underwent substitution reactions. So benzene didn't undergo addition reactions, it underwent substitution reactions. So that would lead us to think that Kekulé's structure mustn't be right. In terms of bond length and um, shape, scientists have found out through things like x-ray crystallography and the like that the bond lengths are all the same. 
they are somewhere in between, intermediate, um, between carbon-carbon double and carbon-carbon single bonds. Now because all the bonds are actually the same, that makes the hexagon regular. And because it's a regular hexagon, it actually has a planar shape, it's flat, it's not distorted or crooked. And the, the sort of the final nail in the coffin, if you like, for Kekulé's structure um, is the enthalpy of hydrogenation. Now, scientists have measured that and it's coming out at minus 208 kilojoules per mole. So that means that benzene is actually 152 kilojoules per mole more stable than we would expect from Kekulé's structure. So there's three pieces of evidence that suggest that the alternating carbon-carbon double bond isn't what's going on. So, just what is going on? So, I've drawn up on the board there those six carbons in this hexagonal ring shape. And what we're going to look at first of all is each carbon uses three of its four outer electrons. Remember, carbon has four outer electrons. It uses three of them, so one, two, three, to make three sigma bonds. Now, we learned about sigma bonds at AS. Sigma bonds are where the orbitals that the electrons live in, so if I just draw the orbital here and here, they overlap, sort of end on, so you get this very strong, lean over you can see that you get this very strong overlap of orbitals so the electron pair is very very strong covalently bonded and we get three sigma bonds for each carbon but where's this fourth electron well it's in a p orbital and again if you remember from as p orbitals are lobe shaped and we have an upper lobe and a lower lobe so each carbon one of its four outer electrons is in a p orbital now remember these electrons are occupying this region of space this p orbital region of space so i've drawn the letter e in the upper lobe but they are constantly on the move like that all of these are doing the same thing so we've got these six carbons with these six electrons orbiting in these this p orbital so again we've seen this before when we've looked at alkenes what do these p orbitals do well they overlap sideways so if i just expand the space we'll do the upper lobe do the same here and so you'll eventually see that these orbitals these lobes will overlap and obviously that's going to happen below as well and I'll just do the same there and eventually this region of space is going to overlap so instead of this electron being on its own in this p orbital and this electron being on its own in this p orbital they will pair up and they'll be somewhere in this new region of space and if you remember from the alkenes this is known as a pi bond I'll try and demonstrate that with my hands so instead of being like this which is the sigma bond it's more like like that it's, it's a lot weaker bond because the electron pairs aren't as strongly held so we get this weaker bond formed called a pi bond from a different kind of overlap. See, each carbon is going to do this. So each p orbital will overlap with the neighboring ones and we'll end up with um, this region of space sort of connecting, if you like. And the electrons will now be able to move around in this sort of circular motion and effectively they become delocalized so they are not shared between two carbons anymore they can move around this ring and that has a stabilizing effect on the molecule and it gives it that extra stability that you saw in the enthalpy of hydrogenation data and also the 
um, the fact that it undergoes substitution reactions. Substitution reactions are associated with more stable molecules. And you can see that this, um, this overlap will also bring all the carbon-carbon bond lengths the same. It will make them all the same. So we'll see benzene drawn like this. And so we've got in red this sigma framework. So this these three bonds from each carbon. One, two, three in the sigma um, type of bond. And we've got the, 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 the overall effect of all the overlap of the p orbitals creates this region of space. So this is new, a new orbital formed. And it's this sort of donut shape, this circular shape. And this is known as the pi electron cloud. So we've got those six electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're constantly moving around this orbital, this new orbital formed by the overlap of the p orbitals, this pi electron cloud. And remember, the electrons can either be in the upper lobe or the lower lobe. So we have to draw a similar situation below the the carbon carbon. Um, ring and it's also known as a delocalized electron cloud because these electrons aren't shared just between two carbons they're actually shared between all six. Now just in case my um, diagrams were a little bit too messy for you to follow we've got this nice these nice models to show you so we've got the six carbons and remember, the, each carbon forms three sigma bonds, so one, two, three. And the fourth electron is in this p orbital, so there's the upper lobe in purple and the lower lobe in pink. And these orbitals, these lobes overlap and form the pi electron cloud above and below the ring. And so the other model looks like that. So the six electrons are orbiting in this new region of space, this new orbital um, formed by the overlap of the p orbitals. You can see also quite nicely that the ring is actually planar, it's flat. So we'll just finish with this and We'll, we'll see just how close Kekulé was to actually getting the structure right. The scientists now know that the, the pi electrons are constantly on the move. So what happens is a pair of electrons will sort of flip round to there. That will have the knock-on effect of repelling those electrons round to there. And obviously the knock-on effect is the pair of electrons will go on to there. And that will produce this structure. So the double bonds there now, there and there. And then obviously they will do that, they will do that, they will do that. And we'll end up back where we started. So this is a sort of continuous reversible process. It's known as the resonance structure. We don't use it at A level. Um, but certainly at uh, degree level, you would use the resonance structure. The Kekulé model for benzene is much more widely used. Uh, but at A level, we sort of keep it simpler by using that.